by Bill Hessen for Prickly Pears, the Palm Springs Public Library's oral history project commemorating the 50th anniversary of the city of Palm Springs. And this morning, our location is the residence of Mr. and Mrs. Larry Sitter in Palm Springs. The Sitters arrived in Palm Springs in 1937. They're going to tell us about their experiences and share with us their memories of those days. Larry uh, and Mary, thank you for being with us. You're welcome. Let's Our begin pleasure. at the beginning. Uh, Larry, Larry for first you, where mm -hmm. are you from? Where'd you grow up and where'd you come from? Erie, PA. And that's midway between Buffalo and Cleveland oh. in the east. Yeah, uh, but I remember telling my folks when I was just a boy that uh, when I grow up, I'm leaving this cold country. I'm moving to California. So I waited until I was 24 and that's when I made my move. And I brought a few friends out west. One of them was coming to Palm Springs. His younger brother lived here. So when I saw that magnificent climate here, I didn't want to leave, so. You must have come in the winter. <laughs> <laughs> yes, in December. How about you, Mary, where are you from? Uh, well, I was born in Youngstown, Ohio, but raised in San Bernardino. Oh. Then we come down here, my dad worked for Robert Ransom down here, so we just moved down here. So you came down here too? Yeah. And the two of you met here in Palm Springs? Yes, then. right. Well, what was it really, Larry, that brought you to Palm Springs? Well, my, like I say, I always wanted to move to California. And my brother had a printing business, and I thought, well, uh, I would go into Los Angeles and perhaps uh, work my way up in the printing business, which I liked. I liked many things, though, but uh, but I never got there because, like I say, the climate was so nice here. And I met George Howard, the pro, over at uh, O'Donnell Golf Club at that time. And he was very nice. And I, uh, he had some trouble with his car, so I drove him and his wife to Fresno, where her folks lived, for Christmas. And uh, so then he asked me to come to work for him while he was giving his lessons there at the club. And that I thought, would well, this be that O'Donnell? Would, yes. And uh, well, O'Donnell was the only one. Yes, I guess it was. And so I thought I would hang around. At least I could uh, eat. Then and I stayed with this friend of mine who lived on the Indian Reservation in what was then called Hatchet's Court, uh, mm, where Hallmark TV is back in that area in Section 14. And uh, uh, and I, I liked everything, and I just never wanted to leave. I wasn't here long before I told my folks that I wouldn't trade one square inch of all, for all of the East. Well, what did you do for a living when you first got here? Did, uh, what, what kind of a job did you have? Uh, at the club with, with George Howard. When, when he had no uh, method of picking up the golf ball, so I would shag the golf balls. And when he gave a playing lesson, I'd carry the two bags and... and uh, so you were really kind of a caddy, uh, yes. among other things. Yes, and then and when, when he didn't have lessons, that's what I did, it was, it was caddy. How old were you then, Larry? 24. 24. There were no, uh, see they had no, not even hand cards then, Bill. And uh, all golfers used caddies, I think throughout the world then. Mm -hmm. So you really, the first job you had in Palm Springs was at O'Donnell. Right. Mm -hmm. you, you, you went right to work there because of your acquaintance with the pro. Right. I see. Well, how about you, uh, Mary? When did you come to town? Uh, in 37. Mm -hmm. I didn't uh, did do, really with, do anything. Did you come down with your family? Yes, my mother and father and brothers and I see. sister. D did they move here? Yeah, we moved. We lived on Chuckawalla. Oh. You know, that's way up there. And mm -hmm. When you walk from Chuckawalla downtown, you're really walking. Yeah, all on dirt. <laughs> nothing was paved. <laughs> nothing was paved. <laughs> that's when they tied the horses downtown on the main street. Why did your family move here? Uh, my dad uh, had this job offered to him down here. He come from the, uh, from the east, and then when he was in San Bernardino, he, I don't know, he got knowing people down here, and they asked him to come down here. So that's when the Robert Ranson had that the plaza right in the middle of town, you know. Yeah. So he went to work there, and he sort of managed it there, and he did uh -huh. right through till Zach Pitts, you know, until had, he passed away. Had the away. plaza been built when you were uh, here, when you came? Uh-huh, but not that big. They finally added more. Well, De see, when we were there, they had Des, well, no, Bullocks and all of them over on Palm Canyon. Mm -hmm. 
and then when they put in Desmond's and all the stores down there. I see. Yeah, but he was so your father then was the manager of the plaza for mm -hmm. a long period of time. Yeah, until mm -hmm. he passed away. Do you know about the history of the plaza, the origins of it? Uh, no, no, I really don't. It began. You mentioned the name Ransom. Well, Robert Ransom, he's the one that, uh, he's the one that starts the tram two years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, no, uh, not that it was just real estate. And no, I really don't know. Not too much about it, but your dad was involved there. So oh, yes, he was. Quite uh -huh. a bit. What do you remember about some of the stores in the plaza then? Were there neat places? Oh, they're really nice. I liked them all. <laughs> <laughs> I heard there used to be a delicatessen in the plaza. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was, and it belonged to Joe Sullivan, Mr. Sullivan. He had it. And then sales. Father. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then the sales market. That, that was, was in, in the plaza. Uh huh. Too. That was in the plaza. It was Dr. Gray was in the plaza too. He had his business. Just quite a few. How did you guys meet each other? Uh -huh. In the Catholic Church choir. <laughs> no, the, 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 the first choir. <laughs> no, the first year I was here in, in the summer or Easter of 1938. Old Father Lahane, with his heavy Irish brogue, asked me if I would play the organ for high mass. And I said, well, Father, I don't, I don't play the organ. He said, well, I, they tell me you play the piano. <laughs> and I said, yes, I do. He said, well, the keyboard is the same. <laughs> Won't you please try? He said, I'm really up against it. So I did. And Mary's uh, had, Father Elaine had only two singers. And one was uh, Vi Watson. Mm -hmm. uh, and her, the other, the male, was Mary's younger brother. Oh. Bob. So that's really how we met. Mm -hmm. And from that, uh, you, well, you must have liked each other a good deal. Well. <laughs> then Mary joined the choir the following year, and her mother was active with the group, too. Mm -hmm. And uh, she sang in yes, the choir, we too. Started courting about that time. <laughs> but in the meantime, you were busy at O'Donnell. Was the golf course, when you started there, much as it is now? Yes, they didn't change anything uh, at all. But the, the, the original layout is still the, the oh, very same. Okay. And uh, uh, Mr. O'Donnell and, and a friend laid it out, and John Klein built it in the late 20s. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it, it always remained the same. So really, there hadn't been any, many changes. No. What do you know about the origin of the O'Donnell Golf Club? How it came into being? Did you pick up any stories about that? Well, of course, oh, uh, Mr. O'Donnell did like the desert, and he... Uh, now, this was Thomas O'Donnell. Oh, Tom O'Donnell, yeah. yeah. An oil man from, from the east. And uh, uh, he leased that property behind the, the Desert Inn, mm -hmm. which the, the Desert Museum now owns up on the hill. Uh -huh. the, the Hilltop Studio. Yeah. That was Tom O'Donnell's first home. Then he bought the property down below, which is the golf course and uh, built another one down at the lower level against the house which the O'Donnell Golf Club used as a clubhouse now. And uh, he just liked golf, but he soon arrived at the age when he couldn't play anymore, but he loved to see his friends play. His business had been oil, I think, hadn't it? Started in Braddock, Pennsylvania, he told me. Yeah. And uh, then to Long Beach, where I think in Bakersfield in those areas mm -hmm. where he became very wealthy. And then he moved down here. About what time did he come here, do you, do you know? Well, like I say, the golf course was built in the late 20s, uh, so uh, it must have been uh, not much earlier than that, mm -hmm. when, he, when he leased the property up there from Nellie Kaufman and, and built his home there. How many members were there when you arrived? We always, <laughs> oh, Actually, there was it was it was it wasn't really a membership club then. Uh, it was the only golf course, so all, most all the hotel oh, everybody just played guests and uh, and the times it got very very crowded. I see. So it really wasn't a private club. No, it wasn't then. No, not that that time. It wasn't private until after uh, Mr. Donald gave it to the the group and leased it to the city. Mm -hmm. So when you first started, it was really a public course, and, then, and yes, the only yes one. Yes, it time. was. Yeah. Uh, at, at that time, had the uh, golf course out at the um, uh, hotel closed, uh, the one up at uh, El Mirador? Yes, that was closed when I came in '37. I don't think anybody was playing it then. Was it? That was the old P.T. Stevens uh, property, I think, yeah. behind the desert. Inn. 
the, or the owner of the hotel. Who was the manager of the golf course when you first started playing there? John Klein, the man who built it. I see. Yeah. And he stayed in, uh, and operated it at that time, too. He stayed there for, for many years. Yeah. You must have seen a lot of people in those days. Yeah, sure did. Did and a lot of the Hollywood very the people come there to play? Oh, yes, many of them. And some very wealthy people, some very prominent people. Ask me to remember them, and I, I can't tell you. <laughs> well, I, <laughs> no, you but names I, like I do know. Fleet, I know that the, the Timken uh, people from Canton, Ohio, always wintered out here, and they played a lot of golf there, yeah. as many did. Uh, and, lo of course, a lot of the stars came down to play. You know, I know Bill Powell and Mousy Powell oh, yeah. came down there and played yeah. a lot. Bill loved golf. Mm -hmm. And uh, Charlie Farrell, too. Even in those early days. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, many of them. Uh, I tried to think of some of the names, but I... <laughs> and most people today wouldn't uh, know the names anyway. Well, you did mention Reuben Fleet, and he was pretty well known. He was president of General Dynamics Corporation yes. when he... Uh, a powerful man. Started spending time here. Bob Hope always came down and played, didn't he? Yes, uh, he played there. Most of his golf was played there at O'Donnell. He still does. He liked it. It was near his home. and yeah. You'd run down, play nine, and get home. And now, when you got married, did you get involved in the golf course very much, Mary? No. Uh -uh. You worked there for a long time. Yeah, but I only went in for a week. <laughs> Stayed for 17 years to help you out. <laughs> Well, the price was right. <laughs> no, I used to play then before I went to work there. Did you? It uh -huh. wasn't until we acquired the, the clubhouse property over there, Mr. O'Donnell's home, and uh, uh, turned it into a clubhouse and when Mary started helping out over there. Mm -hmm. Helping out, and then she got stuck. <laughs> was on the back of the course where the restaurant is now, was that uh, part of his home in, in, in the beginning? Mm -hmm. that, uh, he was getting... It was getting more difficult for him to drive up and down uh, the road to the hilltop house. Mm -hmm. And uh, they built the lower home, and he didn't use the upper one at all in late years. Oh. Then, then uh, they sold it to uh, Mrs. Springs. Milner. Yes, it really was. You could see it from all over. Uh -huh. it, it really sort of looked down on the whole desert. <laughs> it did, yes. Had a good view. And then they sold it to who? To uh, Nate Milner. I don't know much about Nate Miller's history, but he, he was a good friend of Tom O'Donnell's. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know if you knew Mrs. Milner. No. She's no longer living down here. She was a good, very good friend of the O'Donnell's, too, mm -hmm. as uh, her husband was. You, uh, one, one thing that, uh, a story that I know you know a little about is when uh, they built the uh, site up on the hillside where the cross was for so many years. How mm -hmm. did that happen? Well, uh, John Ka Klein told me that, uh, you know, John Klein was the, the first uh, uh, manager. And he was the builder of the, the golf course for Mr. O'Donnell. At, at first, he was Mr. O'Donnell's sh uh, chauffeur mm -hmm. and mechanic. Uh, he told me that Earl C. Anthony finally got religion in his old life, and he decided to <laughs> put a cross up on the side of the mountain. <laughs> That's the way John Klein put it. Now, Earl C. Anthony was well known in Southern California, wasn't he? Yes, well, he was in the... He owned the KFI radio, yeah. which was the, the biggest station in Los Angeles, and he also was an automobile dealer, I think. I don't know what m what make, but Packers. yes, he was, was, he was... I know he was a big dealer in mm -hmm. autos. So he, it was his, uh, his thinking that put that up there. Mm, uh, his project, and he, it, that was a huge cross, and he had neon tubes put all along the, on both sides of the, the wooden cross, you know, oh. lighted. And, uh, but as the year, it was nice at first, but uh, years later, there was so much uh, damage to it. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's hard to keep up. Yes. I and know the lights so weren't there anymore. They took them off yeah. and they put a, a big light down at the base that shined on it. Mm -hmm. But even, it was an, what, what was, you would term it, an attractive nuisance. People would go up there and they'd uh, <laughs> break them, they'd smash the bulb, and they'd plug into the wires and they'd cook, and oh, <laughs> it got to be a mess. So. In other words, they used it like a little campground. Right. Well, it was fenced off, though. It must have been hard for them no, to No, it there. really wasn't fenced off, uh, the, the, the down, except down at the very base of the road. But oftentimes, uh, they'd either smash the lock if they wanted to drive up, but most people walked up. Oh, I see. And they could just walk around the gate sure. without any trouble. How long did the Easter sunrise services 
continue up there. When did you begin doing those? You were used to play. Seems to me that they were uh, in progress when I uh, came. In the community churches. I think in, in 38, yes, I th think they were there. Uh, the community church, yes, they handled them. And Bill Hay, he was the announcer for Amos and Andy mm -hmm. at that time. He was always the orator. So yeah. He gave all the readings. You remember Bill Hay? Yes, I do. Indeed. You mentioned something else, too, that I think was interesting. You put a set of high-powered speakers up on that hillside at one time. Yeah, Mr. O'Donnell's idea. He thought it would be awful nice to have some chimes that would <laughs> ring out that? <laughs> the whole the valley chime. would hear. Well, that was, let's see, that was, uh, hmm, and it was before I went in the service. So it was in the very early 40s. Mm -hmm. Simpson's uh, music store, radio store over on Palm Canyon Drive, he dealt with him and they, the spe oh, uh, building the speakers must have been five feet high, a square, mm -hmm. big square boxes. Mm -hmm. Each one, he had four of them mounted at uh, the distance there, below the, that lookout up there. And uh, inside they had a keyboard with 26 keys, a carillon. And uh, he asked me to play it, well, knowing the keyboard, <laughs> so, so I did. And when you would, uh, you would, the first time I played it, you'd strike a key and I'd have to wait several, I don't know how many seconds before I could hear coming through the door the sound. And I, well, I, couldn't play all the way back I couldn't play that way. <laughs> I couldn't play with that delay. No, so they put a monitor speaker inside. But that was a, it did sound, it, the sound did not carry like they thought it would. But it, O'Donnell's idea was that the whole yeah. valley, the whole desert would have He wanted chimes. them to carry they away They got out. the time every night at six o'clock, dong, dong. Yeah, <laughs> and did the dong. then play some <laughs> records and uh, some uh, classics. Mm -hmm. Semi-classic. Well, you mean you had classical music in, in, in yeah. the night era? Yeah, and then I would play <laughs> some of the old tunes. <laughs> tunes. You could play it with only one finger. You couldn't play a chord mm -hmm. because those. It sounded like a huge uh, bell that someone would strike with a hammer. Uh, a <laughs> chime. Did you get any complaints? <laughs> no. As I recall, no. Nobody complained. No, they always called and asked me the time because they knew he timed it up. Did you have to play it every hour on the hour? Or? Every night at, at uh, a quarter of six. Yeah. Oh, I went I over there. It was always the same time. Then, of course, I, I left then, then I, when I went in the service. And when I came, let's see, I was down here when Mr. O'Donnell passed away and they asked me to play, the, play it for it, a memorial service they had there at the golf course mm -hmm. for him. So the speakers were still installed at mm -hmm. that time? Yeah. But they're not there now, are they? No. The vandalism and, and uh, they smashed them and they finally hauled them away. That would be a problem. But for a while you were the chime master. And yeah. <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> you had a lot of fun there. We did a lot there. of good things. It was. Yeah. Uh, he was a, a nice man and Miss O'Donnell and I, I liked it. We got along very well. When did you become the manager of the place, uh, Eric? Oh, I forget the year now, Bill. It was a... Would have been after you came back from the service? Long time after that, because they had another man manager which, whom you knew, I think it was a neighbor of yours, Ernie Lafleur. Oh, yeah. And he was there about seven or eight years, and it was right after he left that I stepped in. And but you stayed there as the... Uh, that was... Mm -hmm. Until my were. retirement three oh, years ago, yeah. So really, your life pretty much revolved around that golf course. Yes, it did. I gave it my all. <laughs> <laughs> you were telling me the story of the first election in town, though, and uh, when, when the city decided to incorporate, which was the occasion that we're commemorating with these interviews. What do you remember about that? I remember that a lot of people were talking about it, but I was so new here, and I had just registered to vote, uh, and I didn't know much about it, so I asked Mr. O'Donnell which way I should vote, for or against the incorporation. He said, oh, vote for it, definitely. He said, we need it desperately here. So I said, I will do that. So I did. Mm -hmm. uh, other than that, I don't know, there, there were a lot of people, most of the people I knew were for it. I really didn't know anybody, I, at least I don't remember. Did you go to any of the meetings uh, no. about it or anything? No. So I wouldn't have been qualified to uh, speak anyway because I was too new here. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but you voted for it. And then you said that a year later there was another election. Well, a couple of years, I think, there were some who were dissatisfied with incorporation, and I don't know who started it. 
perhaps when you have a chance to talk to Earl Streeby, he can enlighten you on that. <laughs> but uh, they didn't like the incorporation, and they wanted to disincorporate, and they got enough signatures to have it put on the ballot. So, so there, we voted again. A couple again. years later, there was an election to disincorporate. Mm -hmm. Disincorporate, yeah, but it failed. And that failed, too. Mm -hmm. And of course, you voted against that, I suppose. Yes, I did. Having voted for incorporation, I wasn't about to <laughs> disincorporate. Did you get involved in any other things around town very soon in those early days? Mm. You're wrong. Not really, because I was, you know, my time was all at the club or the choir at church. Once I got into that playing the, the organ, you know, at church, uh, there wasn't much else. How many churches were there then? Only the community church and uh, the Palm Springs and uh, Our Lady of Solitude, where I played, and the little church, uh, Our Lady of Guadalupe on the Indian Reservation, are the only ones. So there were two here. Catholic churches. Mm -hmm. the that was a tiny one, one that was that was condemned. It was a little adobe building and was condemned after, I think, the 19... One, one earthquake cracked it pretty badly and they <laughs> condemned it, so they weren't allowed to have any services. Oh, but they got rebuilt then. Yeah. After World War, they used they moved a, a, one of those buildings down there. Mm -hmm. Now it, it's completely rebuilt. I imagine the Indians uh, went there. They did, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who were some of the other people that played golf in those days? Did you have any political leaders who came to town that you remember? Uh, senators or yes, uh, congressmen or presidents? I remember the governor of Massachusetts was out <laughs> here, and he uh, he said, we want to get a, a couple of cats. And I didn't know what he was talking about, <laughs> but that's the way he pronounced cards. <laughs> so, <laughs> I remember him very well, Governor Fuller. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, some of the others, I, I wish I could. Rem I wish I could help you, Bill, on that. Did I, any I know presidents I'm play there? No. Did you ever have a press president on the course? No. When I came down and stayed at Smoke Tree, he was a golfer, but I think he was taken out. I think the, some of those other clubs, like Thunderbird and Eldorado and Indian Wells, were already built then in Tamarish, so I think they took him out there to play. No, he never played uh, Odon. And. Of course, the ferries being close over there, I think they thought it was rather dangerous. That's one reason why Bing Crosby would never play there. He said, you want me to get killed? He, <laughs> he told a friend of his. Uh, <laughs> but where, where the fairways that. cross one another, <laughs> that yeah. occurred to me a few times. Well, Frank Sinatra side always side. played there, though. He played there. Yeah, Frank's mm -hmm. played there a lot. He used to invite a lot of the people, even after it became a private club, you invited a lot of people in town to come there and play, didn't you? Oh, yeah, sure. But after it became a private club, uh, we always did allow members of other private clubs, regardless of where they were, on a reciprocal basis, you know, to play yeah. golf there. Uh, and most uh, uh, private clubs do that. Mm -hmm. I guess that's true. Mm -hmm. I remember other members, Ben Shearer, for example, was a very active member. Yes, he was. He How did the uh, Committee of 25 fit into the O'Donnell Golf Club? Well, there was a lot of misunderstanding on that. You know, there were a group of... Uh, people, I still have the plaque here, uh, got together in 1940 and had a, a bronze plaque cast uh, to give to Mr. O'Donnell. Mm -hmm. They wanted to show their appreciation for him, to him for letting them play golf there. And uh, uh, well, we, the members, members of, the, of the, we, the 25 Club, they called it, but that was long before the 20, Committee of 25 Club was in existence. Oh. Uh, but when they did decide, J.E. French, an automobile man from San Francisco, he and uh, a number of others got together and wanted to, they thought there was, there, they really had no place where they could invite a very prominent, important figure who visited the desert area to sit and have lunch to, and to meet uh, a group of uh, good business people down here. So they organized the Committee 25 Club. That's the way I understood it. And uh, and they call it the Committee of 25 Club. So there was a little confusion there. And O'Donnell Golf Club, when Tom O'Donnell um, organized the club and uh, told the city he would give them the property if they would lease it back to the, the club which he was forming for 99 years. And in 1944, they accepted it the city council and uh, 
uh, he decided they should have 25 trustee or voting members. That, see the compete for the club. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and it had nothing to do. And then when the 25 club, the committee of 25 club organized, it had nothing to do with the Donald Golf Club. They merely leased that property up there from the club. The little house on the back mm -hmm. corner. That strip along there was leased to the 20, 25 club, you see. see. But most people think that they run O'Donnell Golf Club, but they never did. They had nothing to do with it. They are their tenants. Hmm. But uh, the confusion was that because O'Donnell has 25 voting members hmm. and a board of directors of seven. I see. So but actually, the committee. I don't remember the year. Nothing whatever to do with the no. operation of the golf club. Marvelous club, though. Always very fine mm -hmm. men were in that. Well, you kept their lawns mowed. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Thinking back, yeah. Floyd Odlum, and uh, I know, uh, and he was a member. And and uh, Paul Hoffman visited there many times. He was not a member when he was in town. They never did get President Eisenhower up there, but they. And uh, they had some marvelous people who belonged to that, and still do. Well, I imagine many of the members of that were members of O'Donnell, too. Right. Uh, that would mm -hmm. be normal mm -hmm. over the years. But uh, it, the, your, your comments about that are interesting, because I've always wondered. Well, Mary, while he was doing all this, what were you doing? Staying at home. <laughs> <laughs> Playing golf, enjoying life. Well, now life. you can say staying at home, but you did a few things. Well, we did a few. You know, like uh, when we were in the JCs, we always put on the yearly play. Do you ever go to see that? Yeah. And he wrote song. He wrote a couple of songs for that. That, and was, that was actually Canada's we were ruptured uh, roosters, though. <laughs> or what? Retired? What do they call it? <laughs> retired roosters. Exhausted. <laughs> Exhausted roosters. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but, Any, um, anyway, we they put on the the uh, play, you know, in town, and then they used to show it for three nights. It got pretty good. Yeah, it was when, fun. When did you start raising your family here? Oh golly, Mary Margaret. She won't care if I say. Forty-five. She's, she was she's 41, 41 and Butch is 46. So that's how many years I've been raising. So it would have been in the 40s. Yeah. Uh huh. So before that, you really wouldn't have known a great deal about the schools. No. Uh huh. Because you weren't involved. No, I wasn't involved in anything like that. But Which? when when the kids were hmm. younger, I was in St. Teresa's and doing a lot of stuff like that. What did you do for fun when you first got here in the late 30s? Uh, when we first got here, I can remember once we walked up to the falls. Do you remember? And it was oh, we used to so hike and talk hot. Different. So we took a bike, and he said, "Well, the Indians, you keep warm in a blanket, cool." <laughs> we did that. We didn't really. There wasn't really too much to do. Mm -hmm. I remember when Frank Portnoy had the uh, gambling out there. He we he said we could all come out there, but we couldn't spend any of the money. So if we'd go out, he'd give us some money to out in 29, 39 Club, was it? On oh, the, and then no, that was. No, we had the 139 Club yeah. and the Dunes, and Portnoy's was called the Cove. Yeah, the Cove. Mm -hmm. For the Elks Club. That's where the Elks Club mm -hmm. is now. Yeah. But we made our own fun. So he'd yeah. invite you to come out and play, but wouldn't yeah, let you yeah. No, he said, we, you, we want to see, and you can come out and we'll give you, you give you a good dinner, but don't you, he said, we'll break your blankety blank arm if you put one nickel in the slot machine. <laughs> of your own he wouldn't yeah, allow. He wouldn't allow. They didn't Why did he feel that way? want any ordinary well, people here in the desert to do any money. gambling at the club. Let's see. I wonder why that was. I think perhaps it, they felt they were uh, eliminating a problem. Did they have entertainment there? Or no. No, they never had any entertainment. Just the gambling. But there wasn't really too regular. much for anybody to do here. here. Well, we went to the ball games. We played golf, ball and stuff yeah, the, like that. The, yeah, the uh, softball games. Yeah. You know. uh, did, um, well, Earl had started the theaters then, Earl Streety. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. There were, uh, he had the, you see, the Palm Springs Theater was was uh, in operation, and the plaza had just been built in, uh, was it in 36, when they built the plaza, of course. Yeah. Well, it just celebrated its 50th anniversary, mm -hmm. so it was just 50 years ago. Yeah, Garbo was down, they, they show, I think, showed one of her pictures mm -hmm. uh, for the opening. Yeah. It was hard to get her out to anything, but she did, they did, she did come down for that. And uh, when you mentioned the plaza before, Stuart Williams, the architect, mm -hmm. Eric Williams' father, uh, he, his dad is the one who, uh, well, he was the architect for the original plaza. And he worked with, uh, I don't know who was behind it with the money, but uh, they did, it was a lovely thing when that was built here for the desert. 
Let's see. Well, that was probably the main shopping place. Now it's uh -huh. rather, yeah, it's rather insignificant now. No, well, it's not as big anymore, but um, still there. But it's still there. <laughs> Did, was there any place to go for dancing uh, in those days, or what were some of the good restaurants around town? The Chi Chi. Yeah, the Chi Chi. Uh, and we used yeah, to go Earl, to that Earl bar. Earl Sherman had the. <laughs> at the club. Uh, yeah, the and across the street. Uh, was that the bar? Royal Palms. The Royal Palms. Yeah. Had, it was a little <laughs> nice spot there. Um, Bar called the Royal Palms. Well, the Royal Palms Hotel was back in there. Ruby the Dunes. Uh, that well, that Harry Matashi owned that restaurant. Oh yeah. We oh. had our wedding breakfast there. Uh -huh. Did you with really? The, with yeah. the Dunes. In Matashi's yeah. restaurant. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah. Now that was right across the street from the Chi Chi, or was it farther down um, the street? A little down up the street. Uh, 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 from uh, from the Chi Chi. Oh, did, where, where the Ruby it was Dunes. It was the El Dorado Hotel, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. But that isn't where we had the breakfast. We had it up closer to town. El Dorado mm -hmm. Hotel. Where was that? That's down, down no. by Robinson's. Oh, was. when oh yeah, Harry Matashu moved a big building. I don't know from somewhere. They had an off time getting, and they set it down there where the, there's a bank building now, and that was a hotel. Yeah, mm -hmm. they made a hotel. Well, they called the, the Del Tacos too. Would have been yeah. There. Well, the Del Tacos was there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's an old. That was an old. old how about the dollhouse? Do you remember that? Yeah, we went to the dollhouse. Yeah. yeah, that was a good night spot. A good place to go. <laughs> yeah, and then we had the bowling alley there too. You see, that's uh, right. We bowled all the time. Across from the old telephone it. building uh -huh. uh, was a, uh, I think, a six-lane bowling alley. A lot of the stars used to come down there and bowl too. They see, there wasn't much to do for recreation. Mm -hmm. Sounds and, uh, like there was a lot. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course, for a small community, it was enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you ever get involved in the horseback riding? No. The I n in fact, I never even sat on a live horse. <laughs> <laughs> when did you begin painting, Larry? Oh, uh, about 31 years ago when I quit smoking. <laughs> I needed something to what, 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 so what? desperately to do with my hands. And, and uh, of course, I always loved art and, and music anyway. So, And I saw a painting which uh, one of Harry Matasio's sons did. I saw it at his house. And, and I was looking, and he said, uh, you're looking for a signature? And I said, yes. He said, I did that. And I said, you did? And he told me he studied at adult education at the high school. Mm -hmm. So, oh my gosh, I told Mary, if he can, can do that well, and that's where I'm going. So I did. <laughs> and uh, Brownell McGrew was one of the teachers when I went there. And he's world famous today. Mm -hmm. And uh, another desert painter, and I studied with them. And there, and I, I was off. But I didn't have much time, of course, when I was working, except at night, to paint a little bit. Uh, I got hooked. Yeah. What were some of your favorite desert scenes in those early days? We, you, well, you probably always had a painter's yeah. eye. Like, uh, like old Fred Penny used, used to say, you go out in the desert, you can sit any place, and uh, in one spot, and, and just keep turning your chair and find a subject, no matter which way you turn. <laughs> and of course. Uh, I felt that way too. There were a lot of nice areas around Palm Springs then, before it was so built up. Mm -hmm. You know the, the canyons and uh, well even the view just right from here even. Mm -hmm. You mentioned Fred Penny. Who was he? Uh, he he's uh, a quite a famous desert painter. Uh, I first saw his paintings at the Southwest Gallery in Palm Desert before long before Palm Desert really grew, and. Uh, he was from from Illinois. He painted all his life. Good painter. Did you know any other artistic people in those days? Yes, uh, Jimmy Swinnerton. Mm -hmm. He was with us one time. We were painting up in Painted Canyon, and marvelous to be with people like that. And Brownell McGrew was up with us, and another man from uh, who was famous but died young. Robert Reichel, a marvelous painter. The Desert Museum has some of his work at times. Mm -hmm. uh, there's one down there now. It's owned by the, I think it's by the, the Phillips Collection. Mm -hmm. And uh, old Carl Bray was here then. He's still down in Indian Wells. Mm -hmm. And uh, but those are the the few that really became uh, very well known and that I knew back then. When you came then. They were just really starting to begin getting most of the streets in town paved. <laughs> yeah. Was that true? I remember when Indian Avenue was unpaved. It was unpaved when I came here, but shortly after that, they were there many stores along it then? No, there was one big market there called Hatchet's Market uh, 
uh, across from the, the old Plaza Garage, which is still there, you know, the building on South Indian Avenue, mm -hmm. um, where Hallmark yeah. TV is now. Uh, that was a market there, and uh, that wasn't even a paved floor in there, most of it. Mm -hmm. How about, uh, what, what kind of a car did you drive, and where did you take it for service? <laughs> well, then of course, that's another subject. <laughs> I, in 1936, I won a car back in, in Pennsylvania. Oh, you did? A 36 Pontiac, so I that's what I drove out here in <laughs> the following year. <laughs> and uh, we had that. Gosh, we had that so long, I got $50 for it when I sold it. <laughs> well, where did you take your car to have, have it worked on, usually? That's a good question. Well, uh, let's see, Billington was here then. Yeah, that's good. The, yeah. Um, <laughs> was Bill was Billington in business that uh -huh. early? Mm -hmm. Yes. And, uh, and Bunker's Garage. Then, I guess. yes, Bunker's Garage. Yeah, it was the right. Desert <laughs> Garage then. Uh -huh. And uh, I didn't take it there though. Uh, I don't think we had much trouble with the car, to be truthful. No, I, I'm just trying to remember where I did take <laughs> it if, when it needed repair. Didn't seem to need re much repair work. <laughs> no, sir. But you could buy gas. I know. Uh, up on Pond Canyon, uh, uh, across from down the beach culvert. Uh, uh, where that is. Well, well that they had That was the Almerida Garage, yeah. which is now an art gallery. Uh -huh. uh, yes, but there was a, a standard service station on, on the corner of a motto. And Earl Huff had Pond his. Canyon. So there were quite a few of them. Yeah. And then uh, yeah. another one. And Earl we had three had He had his gas station on the corner of... Uh, of a motto and the uh, Indian. No, that no. was the Associated Service Station. I think they called it the Associated. <laughs> and Earl's, uh, Earl Neal worked for Earl Huff. Oh. Yeah. So <laughs> in those days, Earl Huff had a gas station. Yep. It was oh. only a few b years before he, Al Weingarten talked to him, and uh, mm -hmm. and he went into business with. And Al Joe Weingarten. Henderson had the, uh, he had the bowling alley. His mother later, owned all in later those years, courts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when they had a fire. People come from service stations by <laughs> every place and went to the fire. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, well, they jumped were all on those and left. Firemen, you know, on the. Oh. So yeah. Joe Henderson was had the bowling alley. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Years Not, ago. No, he was yeah, just. He did. He, I know he was young, uh, just a kid when I came here. When we yeah, well, came here, but still, uh, later years, Joe you, yeah, did. Yeah. Yes, he had the bowling alley. Yeah. yeah. And he was. He also worked, I think, at uh, the El Mirador Garage. More than likely. At one time, he was very yeah. active there. Well, see, yeah. see, there were a lot of people in town. Then. How there big was the town when you came? Do you remember? I don't know the population, but uh, when you got up as far as the El Mirador Hotel, that was uh, about the northern edge. And there was an apartment yeah. uh, building up there on North Palm Canyon, right around the bend. It was called the Cahuilla Apartments. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's no longer there. I don't know what it's called now. Uh, that was really outside of town. I remember when Larry was uh, he come to take me home from the hospital. And I had Mary Margaret, so he wanted to get a, a house. <laughs> he was looking for a house. So he said he went out and he looked on Ramon Road, just a little bit up. And when he told me, I said, you, I'm not going to walk clear out there. <laughs> Ramon That's too far Road. out of town. Oh, I said. about died. And it was only about the third street down from <laughs> east of Indian Avenue. That's how far out it was, the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, did Indian Avenue and Palm Canyon both go all the way to the highway in those days? Just Palm mm, Canyon. Well, they always merge there at uh, where they do now, uh -huh. uh, that triangle in there, yeah. before they built the Allen Ladd building. Uh, but the highway would have been the old uh, 99. Well, no, that was <laughs> Highway 111. 111, still yeah. 111. Well, no, I mean the main, the main through road. Uh, was nine highway 60, 70, 99. 60, 70, 99. When I, yeah. when I came here, yeah, before yeah. the freeway was built. And 111 would have connected with it the same way it does. The same now. way it does now. Yeah. How did you get across the washes out around Windy Point? Were there bridges then? Just prayed. One well, prayed. yes, they had some bridges. <laughs> uh, uh, then, uh, of course, the highway was changed. You see, they they brought it in closer to the mountains now. Uh, the the point they call Windy Point now was not in existence then. Windy Point was just outside of Palm Springs here. Oh. The distance. We call that Windy Point, but they cut the point of that mountain off. Mm -hmm. And in the flood of 1938, it did wash one of the bridges out up there, but I don't know just which one. We didn't have a heck of a lot of bridges then. Mm -hmm. And uh, you it forgot. wasn't easy and uh, we had runoff, no. How far uh, east did Ramon Road go? Do you remember? 
I was trying to remember that not long ago. I was wondering just how, when it was that we could drive all the way to Thousand Palms, and I don't remember. Now, the city hall, when they first incorporated, was not out where it is now, was it? No. Where, where was it located? On uh, North Palm Canyon Drive in the, the 300 block. The 300 block. On the west side of the street. That's just easy. a little building. Did it stay there for quite a while? As I recall, it was there for long time. Yeah, it years, seemed like yeah. it was a long time. I still remember the, the city clerk, old Louise McCarn. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, it was there a long time. I, I know it was there when Gene Terry was, ma uh, was the uh, mayor. Yeah. And he was the mayor, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. He was the mayor and the judge. Well, you mentioned Louise Carn. She was city clerk for a long McCarn. time. McCarn. Yeah. Yes, yeah, she was, yeah. Uh, she, she, was she in doing that? Well, or she wouldn't have been when you came here because the city wasn't quite incorporated then. No. I, I, I think she was living here at the time. Do you remember who the first uh, city manager was, or any of the early administrators, mm. administrative people? Did we have a city manager at first? I don't remember. Or was it just a mayor and city council? I don't think there was a city manager. I can't remember I that. I think we did. I, at least I don't recall it. Mm -hmm. Well, it changed over all those years. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly <laughs> has. What was the best restaurant around in those days, do you think? Of course, the two hotels, you know, the like the Well, the Chi Chi the was always the best. Chi Chi, Chi Chi was when good. When Herb Schumann built the, the Chi Chi, Chi, Chi restaurant there, that was always, he always uh, And well, the did, Dunes. Did all the large hotels offer food? The Desert Inn and uh, the Al Mirador, they were the only ones, the other smaller ones. But and you mentioned the Dunes. The How dunes was 111? Was, was it paved all the way out to Cathedral City? Right? It was, but it went in and out of every little canyon all the way down. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it was much longer, see, mm -hmm. than later on when they re-widened it, uh, they straightened it. And was it paved uh, all the way down to Indio? Mm-hmm. Yes. Because I remember driving, too. The Indio. Three Musketeers you used to go out to. That was well, on Well, there was highway. a night spot out on. That was on Highway 90. <laughs> well, out, out that was there. a good time Night spot there. called the Three Musketeers. And in between uh, Palm Springs and Musketeers, there was the barn. Do you remember the, that? A night spot called yeah. the barn, yeah. yes. That burnt down. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was about a barn. 1939. <laughs> but you see, it was a good night spot mm -hmm. and dancing and music every night. We didn't have uh, many of those. You got involved in the JCs too, but that wasn't until a good deal later. Was no, it wasn't uh, until a lot later. Uh, not really deeply involved, except I used to help them out with their with their musical events. Mm -hmm. And they put on some nice shows during Circus Week. Yeah. Were there any other clubs uh, active in the first when you first arrived in town? That you knew about? No clubs as such. I don't. I don't tennis think there club. a woman. That's right. You know, the tennis know? club was always there. Yeah. Uh, the women's club has the, been there for I years I don't know too. when the women's club I organized, but uh, we were, Nary was never involved in that. I never got into that one. <laughs> See. That was for the elite. But as you say, the <laughs> tennis club has been there for quite a while. Yes. So. Mm -hmm. And I imagine Mr. O'Donnell and Annie Pearl were probably pretty good friends. Yes, I'm sure they were. Uh, I don't recall ever discussing Annie Pearl or hearing him talk about her, but uh, I'm sure they were friends. Well, they probably knew each other very well. You said at one time you used to invite all the police off of policemen to come and play at O'Donnell too, oh, but then yes. <laughs> it got so busy there that you had to, had to terminate that. Then, of course, the firemen too, and then the course was full of firemen and police officers, and no money coming in the till. <laughs> sounds like kind of a community place. Well, it sounds like you've had a lot of fun over all these years. Are there any other highlights that come to mind that you think were especially exciting? Nothing exciting. You mentioned your wedding breakfast. What, what church did you get married in? Lady of Solitude. Lady of Solitude. Mm -hmm. That's the yeah. one on the way home. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. well, Father O'Connor, he's the one that... Father Michael O'Connor was there then. Uh, who was your best man? My brother. Oh. <laughs> and All he also family. sang. He sang. So he, And when he got through there, he ran upstairs and sang. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, you were always involved in music then, weren't you? Yes, yes. he was. Mm -hmm. yeah. When you first joined the, the church here, did they have an active musical program? No, no. Well. No, it was just kind of a hit and miss thing. Like, he had no one to play the organ. There was really no one around uh, to play. And he asked me if I'd play. Well, I got by. And we had the organ he had had to be pumped with your feet. You know, one of those old-fashioned <laughs> But it was a nice-sounding instrument. Mm -hmm. 
but uh, we got Violet. The Violet Watson sort of shared the. Yeah, I'm sure she. And did. she was a good singer. Yeah, beautiful. She sang voice. for many years. It's, she just stopped here recently, but she's got uh, Vi is getting along in years, and it's difficult for her. Mm -hmm. She well, was she at was the Desert Oregon Museum. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we did one of these interviews with uh, Vi. Did and she you? talked about getting in her car to go from the community church to the Catholic That's church. That's right. Mm -hmm. And what a good thing it was there weren't any police around to give her a traffic <laughs> ticket because she had to go so fast. When because we our choir helped the community and the community helped us. I see. Mm -hmm. The first organ we got after we had the, the one I had to pump was an Everett Organtron and the community church had one exactly like it. So, And the minister down there was... I can't remember her name. And his McCartney. His Mc yeah. And Mrs. McCartney said, Larry, she said, I, we have one just like yours. If you'd like, I'll come up and, and show you a little bit about it. And I said, I would love it. <laughs> so I picked her up, and we went up and spent about an hour, and she showed me a lot about the organ, and got out, and I went to take her back down to the community church, started up, and ran out of gas. <laughs> so she... <laughs> Had to help me push it down the, <laughs> the street to the service station to get gas. <laughs> now, was she was she a minister or was she no. one of the? Uh, she was the organist. But the she was married then. to the minister. But hi, her husband was the. <laughs> yeah, uh, husband. was the minister. Oh, there. I see. Well, he did have to be one of the early ministers then. Oh, yeah. I think their first. Yeah. I, I think it was their first. He used to go back a long way. I remember when Jim Blackstone was there, but he came along much, that much was, later. Uh, years later, yeah. yeah. But that must have been. A, a source of great satisfaction to you, being involved in the musical community. Oh, yeah, sure. There was a lot of satisfaction. Did they bring any outside entertainment to the town in those days, like musical organizations, symphony orchestras, or anything of like that? No. Thing? No, they never It was did. too small then. Uh, no. It wasn't until some a few years later when uh, the American Legion had their little hall and... and uh, Jack Benny broadcast some of his, th and they, he brought his band. And a lot of the radio so shows used yeah. to broadcast mm -hmm. from the theaters, didn't they? And then from the theaters, yeah. Bing Crosby did one of his shows at a, from one of the theaters, yeah. Uh, so there was a lot of activity at that time. Is there anything else you want to tell us about? Oh, mm -hmm. Bill, you know there's a lot that I'll think about, think about after you leave, <laughs> but then... Well, you said I there were a lot of things you couldn't talk about. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like in anyone's life, you know, and... and uh, but uh, some marvelous things happen here. When you hear that long, you see the, the whole desert grow the, the way it has. It's That's true. The wild, but the desert itself was more beautiful then, too. Oh, um, yes. Were, yeah. were, there, were there lots of wildflowers in those days in the spring down, right oh, down sure. in the valley? Mm -hmm. when the rains, whenever the rains came at the right covered. time, we had a marvelous display of wildflowers. And but still on the empty sand dunes, we, we do. But uh, not like we did then. Well, I did an interview with uh, one of our best photographers in the desert a couple of days ago, and he said he had just taken a picture of the last verbena. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought that was kind of sad. <laughs> last verbena. I remember Stephen Willard, a photographer when I came here, uh, took a lot of pictures, and he painted them with oil or something, made marvelous pictures. There's one beautiful, one of the north face of Mount San Jacinto on display at the Desert Museum now. One of his. Stephen Willard. You should see it. Did you know him at all, or? Never met him, but I, he was he was living here at the time, and I, I always liked his work. Like I say, I was always interested in art anyway. And then well, you become an artist of some renown. Paul Grimm was here then too, and I. Oh, Paul Grimm. He had a little studio uh, on Palm Canyon Drive, and I would always stop to look at his pictures. And did you get acquainted with him at all? No. Uh, I never did. He was in there painting many times, but... Oh, I did, before he died, yes. Yeah, yeah, I shouldn't... Uh, well, you know, they've gotten rid of all the smoke trees, but... So we have them in our front yard. <laughs> Larry won't let us cut one of them down. <laughs> well, I don't blame him. See, out there, we've had those for 40 years. Well, since we lived here, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks for sharing a little of your morning with us. Yeah, well, you're welcome, you're welcome Bill. This it's our pleasure. It was you know, a pleasure. Well, it's always fun to talk to an old friend. <laughs> Yes, we've known each other a long time. Yeah, it goes back a little.